Well, good Thursday to you, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining us. This is your Alaska Weather, brought to you by the National Weather Service and NOAA. I'm meteorologist Mike Ottenweller here at the uh, Anchorage National Weather Service office, and we're going to bring you tonight's forecast for December 27th, 2018. As you can see, 1-800-472-0391 will get you in touch with any of the three offices. Just follow the automated prompts and you can talk to a forecaster at Juneau, Fairbanks, or the Anchorage Forecast Office. Weather.gov forward slash Alaska will get you a statewide perspective to again reach any of those three offices, Juneau, Fairbanks, or Anchorage, and to be able to use the point and click feature to dial in to where you want the forecast for. And then finally, nws.ar.tv weather at noaa.gov is our email address for the TV desk, and you can get in touch with Mr. Dave Snyder or anyone else uh, that you'd be interested in getting questions or comments to. So let's jump right into it. Lots to talk about tonight. Our storm pattern is starting to set up. For those of you around South Central, I'm sure you've seen some of the snow flying in the Cook Inlet region today. And uh, looking up towards Southeast Alaska, winter weather advisory is still in effect uh, for Haynes Highway, basically the Lynnboro up there through the Haynes Highway. This is in effect till 9 p.m. this evening, 9 p.m. on Thursday. And that is for about four to six inches of snow expected across that region. It is snowing currently and uh, we, uh, we do expect that to continue until about 9 o'clock tonight. Several snow threats will continue for South Central, obviously the one ongoing right now, and then we've got another one in the queue for late Friday night into early Saturday morning. And then hurricane force gusts are going to be possible across western Aleutians, and uh, this is due to a strong system moving in out there, and so we are going to be talking about that a little bit more here as we go through. We also have some snow threats for southwest Alaska, and we'll talk about those as well. And then an active pattern is going to continue across the state, uh, really. Lots of storm systems working their way up from the uh, kind of southeastern portion of the Aleutians, the Alaska Peninsula, and moving right into southwest and south central Alaska, and then of course continuing up into the interior. So with our boots strapped on, here we go. Looking at our advisories across southeast Alaska, there is our winter weather advisory for the Haynes Highway. 9 p.m. tonight expires and four to six inches of snow expected. As we get down towards southwest Alaska, that's where we have our advisories for about six inches of snow due to a, a fairly widespread deformation band, a band of kind of a weak lift, and that is causing some light snow to fall across the area. So we expect about six, six inches of snow, and that is in effect from 6 a.m. Friday until 9 p.m. Friday night. And then once we step out towards the Aleutians, there we can see our high wind watches. These are uh, in effect from about midnight Saturday until 9 p.m. Saturday, excuse me, 9 a.m. Saturday. And this will primarily be for a corridor of winds stretching right to the west of ADAC, possibly hitting ADAC. Uh, not 100% not locked on this, henceforth the watch, but we do expect potential for some gusts up to 75 miles per hour or possibly a little bit greater than that. So stay advised if you're out there, aviation and mariner interest uh, should also stay tuned to the forecast. So what's keeping us so busy? Well. Let's take a look here at the satellite loop. Here we can see our one system making its way through south central Alaska, and really it's the wraparound precipitation that's moving through the Cook Inlet region, and that is what's causing the snowfall here across south central Alaska, and starting to work its way towards uh, more of the Copper River Basin and up towards uh, the Northway area, but starting to mix with a little bit of rain as you get along the Gulf Coast. Yakutat is reporting rain as well as Cordova, uh, and then some rain over towards Seward as well. So not all snow, but we do see some snow wrapping around this feature. Let's move over here and you can look at southeast Alaska on this next one and you can see this area of low pressure is sliding inward and another one is already queued up. This one is the reason why we have the winter weather advisory for the Haynes Highway and uh, that is just because up in the higher elevations and up towards the northern portion of southeast, that's where we have enough cold air. The rest of southeast is primarily rain this afternoon. As we slide off to look at the satellite loop again, looking at all the moisture that's kind of backed up over the northwest portion of the state. We'll talk about that some more as we go through uh, the aviation forecast. But uh, you can see not a lot of uh, activity up here, not as high of cloud tops showing up in the brighter white down here over south central. But we do have just this small area of higher clouds here just to the oh, east of Dillingham, and that is really the advisory level concern. Uh, those are the snow bands moving into southwest Alaska, and so that's what we're watching for out there. And then finally, one more loop here. You can see a weak area of low pressure here, and then this is our highest of cloud tops, and these we expect to be associated with that front that is moving into the uh, Shimia area, and that's what's going to help to set the stage for active pattern to come. So looking at our maps now, you can see here for today's weather, there's just the initial push of that warm air starting to slide into the frame over the western Aleutians and the northern Pacific. 
We will be closely watching that area for the potential for the high winds and certainly heavy snow initially, blowing snow, and then switching quickly over to some rain and possibility of a mixed precip too. Down towards the Aleutian chain, the eastern Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula, that's where they just have some light snow falling. Possibilities from a little blowing snow here too as some northeast to northerly winds start to kick up. Otherwise, primarily snow showers across the Bering. Out towards the southwestern portion of the state, that's where we do have some light snow falling there as well. And again, that advisory won't start until 6 a.m. on Friday, but we do expect some snowfall across the area through the evening hours as well. And then as we go up towards the north slope here, pretty quiet weather up there, maybe some patchy fog along the north slope, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing unheard of for you all this time of year. And then some snow showers continuing across the northwestern portions of the interior. As we get down towards South Central, here's where we have what we call the deformation zone. So basically the atmosphere is kind of deforming the loft and that provides just enough lift um, left over in the atmosphere to rain out some snow showers. So those are continuing this afternoon, should be coming to an end later on. And then the rain along the coastal areas there as we talked about before on the satellites. And then as we stretch down to Southeast Alaska, that's where we have the snow up towards Haines, but then becoming rain as you get down towards the uh, Ketchikan area and down Dixon Entrance Way. So uh, an active pattern will continue for you all in Southeast. Just some lingering snow showers tonight as the system from South Central moves over to the northern portion of Southeast Alaska. But then another system right on its heels going to bring up another slug of warm air and even some moderate rain as we go into the day or excuse me into the overnight hours and that'll push up against southeast Alaska again just reinforcing some more warm air and some more precipitation across the area don't expect the same kind of winds that we saw uh, two days ago we will uh, be on the downward trend from those and then towards southwest Alaska that's where we have our band set up and henceforth the winter weather advisories associated with that again starting at 6 a.m. tonight a little bit farther to the south, mixing with some rain, but uh, primarily this system will move its way through and allow some northerly winds to bring quite a bit of gusty winds through the uh, Alaska Peninsula. The north side of the chain will favor some snow showers, and then certainly plenty of snow showers and cold air out over the Bering Sea. As we step over towards western Aleutians, that's where we have our strong front moving in. Starting out as snow and pockets definitely of blowing snow, especially uh, with those gusty winds. More of a driving snow, don't expect a lot of accumulation, but a driving snow as that system starts to develop. And then as we move into Friday, uh, Friday's weather pattern, you can see there is that frontal system. It starts to elongate across the area, takes on the shape of this purple color is the occluded boundary. And so that's where it's really going to set up for several storm systems to follow on. Here you can see the next one. And as we get forward in time, we'll see another one develop. This is where we'll start to see kind of the breeding ground for future storms. So this one will bring more gusty winds, blowing snow potential to the western Aleutians and possibly central Aleutians. But then another surge of warm air comes up, bringing some moderate rain with it. And the next round of winds, 956 is a definitely a strong system. And so we will be closely watching in that again for that wind potential Friday night. On into southwest Alaska, that's where we still have our snow band set up. And this really is going to stretch up all the way through the Sewer Peninsula up towards Point Lay. And that will just primarily be some light snow, not really expecting much in the way of wind, but certainly light snow and lower visibilities will be an issue with that system. This system will eventually make its way up through the Kenai Peninsula, bringing some more snow to inland areas, possibility of some rain, snow right along the coastline. And then for the southeastern portion of the state, some drying conditions finally for the northern portions, but again, reinforcing another system right into the Dixon Entrance region, which will help to bring another round of rain. And then on into Saturday now, we can see that area of low pressure that was down by Kodiak has now worked its way up to South Central. Possibility of some more snow overnight Friday night into Saturday for the Cook Inlet regions. And then this should stretch out up through the Alaska Range, bringing a couple inches of snow to you all in the interior along the Alaska Range there and uh, parts of the Tanana Valley. Some light rain showers continuing for southeast Alaska, but finally a little bit drier conditions for you all down there as the storm track starts to shift a little bit to your north, but definitely still some light rain down towards Dixon Entrance as well. And then really the big story is going to be out over the uh, Bering Sea here. This high pressure settles in for southwest Alaska, but very briefly we start to bring in this first strong system at 946, 945, and that is a very strong system indeed. We're we'll watching the winds with that, and then a 969 millibar low helping to uh, start to bring the next round of precipitation and winds up to the Alaska Peninsula, and that's where we really expect the continuation of several systems to continue to form one after another down here, and we're going to be watching to see how those progress into the southwestern portion of the mainland and whether or not they could possibly bring a mix of rain and snow farther inland than we've seen in the last couple weeks. 
So with that said, how about those temperatures and what's going to be happening with those precipitation types? Well, across southeast Alaska, you all are staying pretty warm in the southern, port of the, southern part of the state. You're up in the upper 30s, even t possibly up to 40 degrees there, but a little bit colder up near Haines, so 32 degrees tonight, and that's why we have those snow uh, conditions. And then across south central, still all below freezing, but uh, starting to push that envelope there along the Seward coastline, Prince William Sound area, and then Kodiak right at the freezing mark overnight tonight. Generally conditions still well below zero up along the interior portions of the state and north of the Brooks Range certainly well below zero with pushing minus 20 near Utkiavik. On into Friday afternoon, temperatures continuing to warm up once again for southeast Alaska into the low to mid 40s. Temperatures generally moving towards the freezing mark across south central. Still some cold air over the southwestern portion of the state with about minus six there expected at Bethel. Zero degrees for Fairbanks and then generally single digits to just below zero for the northern portion of the state with temperatures hovering right around the freezing mark for the Alaska Peninsula. For Saturday morning, you can expect temperatures in the mid-30s for southeast Alaska, right around zero degrees for Golcana and the Copper River Basin, but still cold over southwest Alaska with minus 20 for Bethel and possibly minus 18 for Antioch. And then up along the interior portions of the state, a slow warming trend with temperatures just below zero, except along the Arctic coastline, no change there, hovering around minus 20. And finally, for Saturday afternoon, looking for temperatures to rebound once again in southeast Alaska to near 40 degrees, generally in the mid-20s around south central. Temperatures are going to be well below zero once again for the Arctic coastline, and then slowly again warming up in the interior portions of the state as we start this slow warming trend. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Okay, so let's head on up into your flying weather now. And as you can see here, again, with that moisture hanging out over the western half of the state, expect mostly IFR conditions stretching all the way from Utkiavik down through uh, basically the Bethel area, Kasukwim Delta, Kasukwim Valley, and uh, that is really just because that moisture doesn't have anything to force it out of there. MVFR conditions all the way around that and stretching down through the Copper River Basin. With those systems pushing into the Gulf, expect IFR conditions up along the coastal ranges, all around the Gulf and up along the Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, especially on the southeast facing slopes. And then MVFR conditions stretching back out over the Bering Sea and our next front approaching there into the western Aleutians and that will bring IFR conditions along with it as well. Pockets of IFR conditions over the higher elevations of southeast Alaska and then generally MVFR conditions over the northern portions of southeast Alaska. That spreads out and becomes a little bit uh, worse for much of Friday afternoon with MVFR a little bit more widespread and pockets of IFR continuing. And then as we get towards the western portion of the state, still see that fairly wide swath of IFR conditions stretching down from north to south with basically the entire mainland covered in MVFR conditions with lots of moisture and another system bringing in more IFR conditions for south central Alaska. Our front stretches out over the bearing and that will continue to be the case as we go into Saturday. More IFR conditions expected with that, a strong front there. And then that system that brought that IFR conditions to southwest Alaska moves into south central on Saturday morning and that really helps to elongate this IFR area here across much of the mainland. For southeast, you can expect widespread IFR conditions for much of the southern half of southeast Alaska and then some improvement for the northern half there early in the day and then improving the entire area later in the day with just MVFR conditions offshore. For the mainland, you can expect those IFR conditions to slowly slide off to the east on Saturday with some improving conditions with VFR expected over southwest Alaska and then our front out over the bearing. How does that look on our passes? Well, Anatuvik is expected to go IFR to MVFR. Meanwhile, Adigan should be a little bit better VFR to MVFR as it's east of that boundary that we talked about. Lake Clark and Merrill both uh, going down from MVFR to IFR. Similar story for Rainy and Windy also marginal visual flight rules down to instrument flight rules. Uh, Isabel will be a little bit further east, so MVFR conditions. Mentasta, MVFR conditions. Tanina should be MVFR as well, and so will Portage. And we're expecting Chilkoot and White to slowly improve the day. IFR should yield to MVFR throughout the afternoon. How about our freezing levels? Well, really, the primary area of warm air is held down here in the southeastern portion of the Gulf. Some of that is surging up over southeast Alaska, so that's where you have some of that rain, snow mixing in. But otherwise, for the most part, still for Friday morning, holding that surface line along the coastline here of mainland Alaska. But there are going to be several systems that are going to work against that, trying to bring up some warmer air as we go into the weekend and into next week. Another area of warmer air, again, with that strong system moving into the western Aleutians, with freezing levels rising to about 4,000 feet pretty abruptly. 
So for our icing maps, we can expect where that moisture is and where that cold air still is in place. Expect them above 3,000 feet down to about 4,000 feet, above 4,000 feet, excuse me, isolated moderate icing conditions really across much of the western half of the state. Our two pockets out there associated with that new front moving in, and then a fairly widespread swath here really impacting Dixon entrance region above 6,000 feet. So how does our jet look? Well, it's a very active jet pattern right now. We've got all the way up to 180 knots coming out of the North Pacific, and this is going to work down through the uh, Northern Pacific and then drop down in support of our strong storm track here over the North Pacific slash Southern Gulf of Alaska. Then it drives back up into Juno's area at 155 knots. A couple fingers of the jet working to support various areas of low pressure out over the Aleutians, and that is gonna make its way with that jet coming across as we head into Friday and into the weekend. So that keeps our 9,000 foot winds pretty active as well. Generally going counterclockwise around this area of low pressure, 65 all the way up to 95 knots with that is a very deep system. And then northerly flow across the Bering still continuing with gusty conditions coming out of the basin passes here and then up uh, out of the southeast and generally a subtly flow across much of the mainland. Once we get over to southeast Alaska, things a little bit quieter there, generally 15 knots coming out of the southwest, working out of the west once you get up towards the Alcan border, and then a little bit more confused flow for southeast down towards Dixon entrance. That continues down to 3,000 feet, 30 knots, kind of wrapping around that area of low pressure, still keeping kind of a south to easterly flow, fairly light across mainland, and it's really out over the waters where we expect the stronger winds to be out of the south and southeast, and then northerly flow continues for the Bering Strait. So for our turbulence map, it's going to be quite active, below 4,000 feet, considerable moderate through the Alaska Peninsula, all the way up to considerable severe turbulence, or isolated severe, below 4, 6,000 out there, and then another pocket for southeast. from a new perspective. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Now that we're in the dead of winter, it's time for one constellation to really shine. That's right, James. Orion is the unmistakable king of the stars this season. You can find him by his distinctive belt of three stars in a row and several other stars that mark his body and head. From Earth, the outline of Orion is easy to imagine, but what if we could take a trip off the Earth and sail among the stars? Would Orion still look the same from another solar system? We're going interstellar. Let's show you. The stars are all vastly different distances from us in space. The closest star to the Sun is called Alpha Centauri, and we should really call it a system. Instead of one star, Alpha Centauri is actually three stars that orbit each other, two yellow suns and one little red one. This system is about 4.3 light years away. That's about 25 trillion miles. So even though Alpha Centauri is closer than the other stars, it's not exactly close. Perhaps the farthest star you can see with the naked eye is Deneb. It marks the tail of the swan constellation Cygnus. It's a whopping 3,000 light years away. So the distances to the stars you see at night can vary a lot. Okay, we have our sky set to any night this week facing southeast. And behold, there he is, Orion in all his glory. No stars tie together like those in the constellation of Orion. Three stars in a row form his belt, and their names are, from left to right, Alnatak, Alnalam, and Mintaka. From there, we can outline the rest of his body to show him as a mighty hunter with his upraised right arm holding a club and his outstretched left arm holding a shield and he has other stars that form a sword hanging from his belt. I know that takes a lot of imagination, but see if you can see him in the stars. Now, let's label Orion's other major stars. We have bright blue Rigel marking his foot, and the really red star named Betelgeuse marking his armpit. His other shoulder star is a star named Bellatrix, and the other knee is called Safe. Finally, his head star, which is kind of dim, is called Maisa. So you're calling Orion dumb? No, no, just dim. Anyway, from Earth, these eight stars form a nice, neat pattern that our imaginations can turn into a giant hunter. They look like they're the same distance from us, but... The closest of the eight stars is Orion's shoulder, Bellatrix, at about 245 light years away. 
that means that the light we see shining from this star left it 245 years ago. Next is Big Bad Betelgeuse, who is about 625 light years away. So Orion's armpit is nowhere near his other shoulder. Safe is a little farther at around 650 light years, and Rigel measures about 773 light years away. Orion's head and belt are his farthest stars. Belt star Alnatak is about 800 light years away, and Mintaka lies 916 light years away. Head star Misa is about 1,100 light years away, and Al Nalam is a whopping 1,342 light years away. That means because we can see Al Nalam as a bright star at such a vast distance, it must be humongous. Exactly. The diameter of Al Nalam is 30 times that of our sun. So what if we launch off the Earth and travel faster than the speed of light to gain a different perspective on the stars of Orion? When we come around to the side of these eight stars, we can see Bellatrix far from the rest and Alnilam way over to the other side. Can you see Orion and these stars now? Definitely not from this perspective. So let's head back to home since I prefer our earthly view. So look for Orion this week and think about the vast distances to the stars and think about what aliens might see in our stars. Stargazing can definitely take your mind on some incredible journeys as you keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Okay, now it's time for your marine forecast, and we're going to start off with our sea ice analysis, courtesy of sea ice expert Mary Beth Schreck for December 27th, 2018. So here you are, again, pretty much pack ice now all the way through the Bering Strait, south of the Seward Peninsula, and down towards uh, St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island. And with that, uh, we do see some of that northerly flow is helping to cause the ice to retreat away from the south side of the islands and then reform, refreeze, and reform on the south side of the islands. So be advised of that. That's kind of what you see happening here near Nunavak, some of that marginal ice de depicted there in the coloring scheme. Otherwise, it continues to grow here along the Bristol Bay coastline. However, as we go into the weekend, start to see some of those systems move up. We do expect some of this ice to retreat um, because of that warmer air and those stronger southeast and easterly winds. So that is our sea ice update. Let's dive into southeast marine forecast. And as you can see here for Friday across Lynn Canal, southeast winds 20 knots, seas 4 feet. And then for the southern portion of the inner waters, north and northwest winds 10 to 25 knots and seas driving up from 2 feet all the way up to 9 feet as you get down towards the Dixon entrance region. And then out over the open waters, expecting westerly winds pretty much across the open waters down to uh, just out the craig there, northerly winds at about 15 to 20 knots and seas running between 13 and 14 feet. How about for Saturday? Well, up towards Lynn Canal in the northern portions of the inner waters, southeast winds 10 knots on a two-foot sea. And then down towards Ketchikan, expect a westerly wind 15 knots and uh, three-foot seas. Out towards the open waters, westerly winds 20 to 25 knots and expect seas between 9 and 17 feet. How about for South Central on Friday? You can see across parts of the Prince William Sound and the Northern Cook Inlet, mainly just 15 knots out of the northeast and northwest. Do expect some freezing spray up towards the Valdez Narrows and across Cook Inlet for the Barren Islands and down towards Shelikoff as well. Some cold temperatures and strong winds making for some uh, mild freezing spray. And then generally across the open waters here, expect a southwest to southeast 20 to 25 knots, seas about 7 to 10 feet, and then 20 knots out of the northeast for the Barren Islands there, seas 4 to 6 feet. On Saturday, expect uh, somewhat of improving conditions towards, uh, actually, most of the conditions are actually deteriorating, and expect south winds 20 knots, seas 3 feet towards Prince William Sound, and then generally west to southwest winds across the open waters, 30 to 35 knots up to gale force there, 12 foot seas. And then for Cook Inlet, expect westerly winds to increase and generally between 30 and 40 knots, 9 to 14 foot seas. And northern Cook Inlet, 3 foot seas, southwest winds, 20 knots. How about for the Friday across the Akpen? Well, again, some freezing spray concerns from Shalikoff down through the Port Hyden area uh, near the Shumigan Islands and expect stronger gusts to come out of bays and passes here with this westerly wind and cold air in place. So seas are going to be about 10 feet and winds generally between 20 and 30 knots. 
and then on into Saturday. Expect somewhat improving conditions here along the Akpen. Northeast to west to east winds, 25 to 30 knots and seas between 5 and 8 feet there north of the peninsula, and then 25 knots out of the west for the Shelikov area, 7 foot seas becoming a little bit more variable southeast in advance of that next low, 14 foot seas, and then generally west and southwest, 25 to 30 knots, 10 foot seas. How about for the Aleutian chain? Well, you can see here better conditions with that northerly flow and then just in advance of this front. So generally 25 to 40 knots. Seas slowly ramping up from about 9 to 14 feet. It's out here that we have that strong front, possibility of some hurricane force gust. Seas generally climbing from 22 up to 30 feet and winds 45 to 55. And then two different systems, one warm front that's moving off and then the next warm front moving up. So southeast winds becoming northeast anywhere from 35 up to 60 knots and seas all the way up to 42 feet out here over the western Aleutians, so pretty severe marine conditions. Along the west coast, generally a northerly wind will persist with 15 to 25 knots, seas about 4 to 5 feet, some freezing spray along the ice edge, some of that could be heavy at times on Friday, and then generally north to northeast winds in advance of that next system, seas climbing up to 6 to 13 feet. All ice packed over the Arctic coastline, Winds generally out of the west or north, 10 to 25 knots. And then on to Saturday, northeast winds generally to becoming northerly by the Bering Strait there and about 10 to 25 knots across the area. So let's recap tonight's weather. We have several advisories out, a couple winter weather advisories in effect from Saturday, or excuse me, on set Friday a.m., 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. with six inches of snow for southwest Alaska. And then over towards southeast Alaska, our winter weather advisory for the Haynes Highway will expire tonight at 9 p.m. We'll see another chance for snow to move into south central Alaska late Friday night into Saturday morning. The battleground is out here over the western Bering, where we'll start to see several more systems making their way up. Some of those systems very strong in nature. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hope you have a great night. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.